Hey there guys, welcome. So today we're going to go over a high to low poly workflow that's really an efficient way of building a high poly and low poly mesh at the same time. So this is specifically geared towards, you know, if you're building assets for a game engine. Now this model that you see on my screen is a model that I built just for uh, demonstration purposes of this workflow. Uh, this is the high poly asset. So what we have here is on this model, there's two modifiers over here, which we'll go over those in a minute. Um, but if I turn this on, here's the geometry for the high poly assets. So we actually have the bevel detail modeled in there. And then from this, what we'll do is create a low poly mesh um, that will then take into another piece of software to bake the high poly down to that low poly mesh. So we're, you know, especially if you're building assets for games, you're looking to kind of fake some of that detail so that the asset looks higher poly than it really is. All right, so let's go over to the uh, bevel modifier over here. We'll hit the drop down. So with the bevel modifier, um, the amount is just the width of the bevel. The segments is the resolution of the bevel. Uh, obviously, these values can change depending on the asset you're building and the size of it uh, in the environment that you're building it for. But the, uh, the more important setting down here is under profile and shape. I have this set to 0.65 and I'll kind of show you the difference here. So Blender by default has the shape uh, value set to 0.5. And you can just see where the bevel is. There's this harsher transition here. And I just don't think it looks as nice. So I set this to 0.65 because to me this asset just, it makes it feel a little more like it's a sub D mesh. And then the other one is if we go under geometry here and I'll again, I'll turn on wireframe to show this. Um, you can see the, the bevel right here at these corners. Um, if I switch this to sharp, which is default, you almost get like this pinching and I'll turn off the wireframe so you can see this, but I just, I don't think it looks, you know, quite as nice. So I switch that to arc and I just think you get a much nicer uh, detail in the corners there. All right. And the other modifier that we have is weighted normal. And I don't know if, you'll be able to see this uh, in the video, but if I turn off weighted normal, you can see without that modifier, there's just certain imperfections in the surfaces of the model with the normals. And um, to clean that up, we just add a weighted normal and it just helps, you know, make the model uh, look nice and shade properly. And then if I turn off both of these modifiers, uh, you can see the actual geometry of the mesh. So I'll turn on wireframe here. So here's the mesh that I modeled. And as you can guess, this is gonna end up being our low poly asset as well. So that's the importance of this workflow is I already built the low poly while I was building the high poly. So that's that's pretty cool because you know, you don't have to go back and feel like, oh, I just built this high poly asset. Now I got to redo all this. It just kind of all is happening at the same time. All right, so let's turn these modifiers back on. And now um, I can just uh, hit Shift D to create a duplicate. And we can hide our high poly mesh. And then we, on the low poly, we can delete uh, these modifiers because we don't need them anymore. Uh, another important thing to bring up on um, both of these assets, the high and the low poly, I do have auto smooth turned on. Now, um, because this is low poly, let's go ahead and rename this. So right at the end here, I'll just rename this low. Okay. And the one other thing we have to do with the low poly asset is create a UV map because we need something um, for whatever software we're using to bake, to bake the textures to. So for that, uh, we will go into edit mode and then I'll switch over to edge and then under select, I'm going to say select sharp edges. So wherever there's a bevel, we're adding a seam on our lower res uh, asset. So from here, we just have to go to edge and mark seam. And then I'll add another window here and switch over to the UV editor. And I'll select everything and just say UV unwrap. Now under unwrap here, um, you know, just make sure you set your margin to a value where you're creating some space in between these islands. 
you basically just don't want the islands to uh, butt up right next to each other. You want to create some space. And then from here, uh, we should be ready to export these models. So I'm going to use Marmoset Toolbag to uh, bake uh, the normal map. But again, you can use other software to bake. You don't have to use Marmoset. So let's start with the high poly asset. We'll select this, go to File, Export, and we're going to export an FBX. And I'll just use my FBX export preset. Um, again, the two important things in here is just I'm exporting the selected object, and for object types, I just have mesh selected. And then we can, uh, you know, name our asset. So I'll just call this uh, bake test underscore high and say export. And we'll do the same for the low resolution mesh. So file, export, FBX, and our settings are already saved here. So I can just switch this to low. All right, so now we're over in Marmoset Toolbag. Uh, now we just have to import our models and then bake. So we'll just go over here and we'll add a bake project. And then we can use the quick loader in Marmoset, select our two assets, and say open. Now in the drop down here, you can see the two assets have been added. For the output, uh, we'll just go here. Now we just have to name these files. Um, so big test. So Marmoset will just name the uh, bakes according to what you set as the name here. Hit save. And now we have normals checked here uh, under samples. I'm going to set this to 64 in format. I'll uh, just do 16 for now. Um, and then we just have to hit preview. And there we go. It baked the uh, normal detail from the high poly mesh down to the low poly mesh. And one thing I like to do in Marmoset is for the low poly asset, um, I like to just estimate the offset. Marmoset will kind of correct certain things and just make sure that all the detail is being included in the bake. So now we can go back to our bake project and we can uh, rebake the normal map. And this is the bake. Then we'll also just to demonstrate, we'll bake a uh, ambient occlusion real quick. And there's our ambient occlusion. All right, so now let's go back over to Blender. And what we're going to do is just apply that normal map to our low poly asset in here. And we'll just see how it looks. So let's switch uh, this to the shader editor. And let's go to the folder with our bakes. So here's our normal map. We'll just drag this into Blender. Okay, we'll go in here, we'll add a normal map node, plug that into the normal. We'll set our normal texture to non-color. We'll plug that into the normal map, and there we go. There is our normal map applied to our low poly model, and I think everything looks really nice. And then just to show you, this geometry is, you know, low poly. So 
There's no actual bevel modeled into this. It's all being controlled by the normal map. I just want to add that this demonstration was strictly about baking the bevels into the low poly mesh, but during the texturing process, you would add additional details like panel seams or, or bolts or whatever it would be, but that would either be added by painting those additional details in whatever software you're using to texture, or you could bake floating geometry onto the surface to add those additional details. But again, this demonstration was just about uh, baking in the um, high to low poly with the bevel modifier. So that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Leave a comment if you uh, have any questions, and I'll do my best to answer. And until next time, thank you so much for watching, and take care.